do our work with optimization here with a few practice problems. Remember, the whole idea of optimization <clears throat> is for us to minimize or maximize some quantity. So as we look at example five here, <clears throat> we're told that a solid is formed by two hemispheres um, and on the ends of a right cylinder. Now, I'm no artist, but we'll, this object might look something like this. You have your cylinder in the middle. And then you have two hemispheres sitting on top of that. So you have a hemisphere there and a hemisphere down here on the bottom. And we are trying to, oh, we're told the volume is 12 cubic centimeters. Find the radius of the cylinder that minimizes the surface area. So we're trying to minimize the surface area. So let's write an equation for the surface area. Now the surface area here, remember we've got the surface area of a sphere. So you take those two hemispheres and you pull them off of the ends and put them together. You've got a full sphere. So the surface area of a sphere is four pi r squared. All right, now we've got this cylinder, not the top and the bottom, but just the side around. And that's gonna be the circumference of the circular top times the height. So the circumference would be 2 pi r times h. So keep in mind, this is my sphere's surface area. And this is my cylinder. This is my primary equation. This is the one eventually I will take the derivative of. However, I've got more than one variable over here on the right-hand side, so I need a secondary equation. We were told the volume of the solid is uh, 12 cubic centimeters. So let's write the equation for the volume. Well, the volume of the sphere would be 4 thirds pi r cubed, and the volume of the cylinder portion would be pi r squared times h. And we're told that that is 12. So let's go ahead and solve for h here. That way we can eliminate the h. I'm going to subtract the 4 thirds pi r cubed. Then I will uh, divide by the pi r squared. It's not going to look pretty, but that's OK. And then this is what we will substitute in for the h in my surface area. So I have my 4 pi r squared. I have 2 pi r. And then I want to substitute in for h. So I've got 12 minus 4 thirds pi r cubed over pi r squared. OK, now before I multiply to clean this up, notice my pi's will cancel and one of the r's will cancel. So and again, I'm doing all of this work before I take the derivative. That means it'll be a little easier when I do take the derivative. I'm going to treat this as 2 over r, 2 over r. And that's what I'm going to distribute to 12 minus 4 thirds pi r cubed. I think that'll be a little bit easier. Again, cleaning up here, let's distribute. That gives me 24 over r minus 8 thirds pi r squared. Let's notice one of the r's cancel. The only other thing I would do is I will remind you we're going to treat 24 over r as 24 times r to the negative 1. Okay, so that when we take the derivative of the surface area with respect to r, I'm going to get 8 pi r. Uh, this one I'll get minus 24 over r squared. And then I'll get minus 16 thirds pi r. And now we're going to set this equal to zero to try to find the minimum. Probably our best bet is to clear that r squared from the denominator. 
Um, and I'll also clear the three. So essentially what I'm gonna do is multiply everything by three R squared. Um, and the reason is to get that the fractions gone. So that gives me 24 pi R cubed minus 72. Remember I'm multiplying by three R squared minus 16 pi R cubed. Ah, looking much better now. Let's move the 72 over. We'll combine these two to get eight pi R cubed. We'll move, we'll divide by the nine, the eight pi so that I get nine, oops, sorry. Yes, nine over pi equals R cubed. And so R would be the cube root of nine over pi. All right, it's not pretty, friends, but it is the radius that will produce the minimum surface area. Don't forget to check this to make sure it is a minimum, right? We are checking the surface area. Now, 9 over pi is going to be around 3, and the cube root of around 3 is going to be 1 something thing, one with a decimal. So if we put that value here in the middle, we can test with one, okay, and we put that in our derivative. So that's 8 pi minus 24. Well, 8 pi is a little bit bigger, so that's positive, minus 16 thirds pi. So that is 16 thirds is around 5. 5 times around 3 would give me um, 15. So that's going to be bigger. So I get a negative here. Then I'll put in two and I end up with a positive there. You can check the values there, but we do confirm that it is a minimum happening at this radius. So remember, the whole idea is you have a primary equation and then you use a secondary equation to eliminate a variable. Let's look at example six next then. We're told that the profit in thousands of dollars is um, for a company spending an amount S in thousands of dollars on advertising. So here's my profit equation based on the amount that they spend on advertising. Find the amount of money the company should spend on advertising to yield a maximum profit. Now, beautiful part of this is they've already done the work for you by giving you the profit equation. We just have to find the maximum. So let's find the derivative which would be negative 3 tenths S squared plus 12 S. And we want to find out where that is at a minimum. So we'll set this equal to zero. Now, again, I'll probably go ahead and multiply by 10 to get rid of the fraction. And then let's factor out an S, a negative 3 S. And that gives me S minus 40. So S is either 0 or it's 40. Now, I do need to confirm that the minimum, I'm sorry, the maximum happens at 40. So you can put your number line, you have 40 there with a, we're testing P prime. I would choose a really easy value like 1. That's going to give me negative 3 tenths plus 12. That's going to be positive. And then you can test something like maybe 50, and you will get um, a neg. I'm sorry, a negative value there. Um, let's check that for sure. So 50 squared is 2,500, and we're going to multiply that times negative three tenths, and then we will add to that 600, and I do get a negative value. Yes. So. The amount of money the company should spend on advertising, that was S. And they should spend $40,000. Remember, you want to not just say S equals. You want to translate it back to the problem. That's why I included the thousands of dollars. Okay, good work there with our optimization. I've got a couple more. These are a little bit more graphical approaches. So 7 says, determine the point on the line y equals x plus 3 so that the distance between the line and the point is a minimum. Okay, let's start with it. We're trying to minimize the distance. 
So we're going to start with our primary equation as the distance formula. So let's refresh our memory. The distance formula tells us to subtract the distances between the x and square that. And then add to that the difference in the y's and we square that. Now, just a side note, remember, you could have x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. The order doesn't matter because you're going to square it anyways. Okay, now the point we can put in for either x1 or x2. I personally find it easier to put it in for the second one. So I'm going to put in 1 for x2 and 2 for y2. And that way, I'll just leave the x1 as just an x, and I'll leave the y1 as just a y. Now, notice there are two variables left on the right-hand side, so we have to use our secondary equation. So I'm going to put in 2x plus 3 in for the y. That will eliminate the y variable. And now we are getting super close to taking the derivative. Now, one more cleanup might be easy if I go ahead and multiply these out. I want to make the calculus as easy as possible. And a lot of times when I'll do some algebra, that can help. Okay, so let's clean it up. Let's see, I've got... 5x squared plus 2x plus 2, and that's under the square root. All right, now I'm ready to take the derivative. So the derivative, and maybe we think of this as 5x squared plus 2x plus 2 to the 1 half power. I'll bring the 1 half in front. 5x squared plus 2x plus 2 to the negative 1 half. And then I've got chain rule times 10x plus 2. And that becomes 10x plus 2 over 2 times that square root. Okay, now we set it equal to 0. When we set it equal to 0, I want you to think of it as 0 over 1. You're going to notice that square root on the bottom, as ugly as it is, is going to go away. And I'm left with 10x plus 2 equals 0. So now you can move your 2 over and then divide by 10. I end up with x equals negative 1 fifth. So this is the x coordinate for the point, but I need the y coordinate. Remember our secondary equation related x and y. So I've got y equals 2x plus 3. And I'm going to put in negative one-fifth for x. So that gives me two times negative one-fifth. This is negative two-fifths. Um, plus three is going to give me two and three-fifths. If I want that as an improper fraction, that would be 13-fifths. And so I end up with the point negative one-fifth, 13-fifths. That's my point there. Now, remember, the principle is the same, right? We're still taking the derivative, we're still setting it equal to zero, all of that good stuff. The difference is the primary and the secondary equation. That's really all that changes here. Okay, let's look at our last example for this video, which is example eight. We're told that the rectangle ABCD with parallel sides to the axis is inscribed in the region enclosed by the parabola. Find the x and y coordinates of the point C so that the area of the rectangle is maxim is a maximum. So we want the area to be maximized. So we need a formula for the area of the rectangle there. So let's start with the area of the rectangle would be x times x. So I'm sorry, x plus x, so 2x times whatever y is. 
Now we need a secondary equation to relate x and y. That's why we were given the curve that it is enclosed in. So we'll make that substitution for y. Now go ahead and distribute to clean this up just a little bit before we take the derivative. And so I get negative 24x squared plus 8. And we can set this equal to 0. Let's see, move the 8 and the 24 gives me 1 third equals x squared. So x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 third. Now remember, we're looking for point C. So that's going to be the positive. Lo no, well, excuse me, looking at where C is located. So we're going to go with x being positive square root of 1 third. And now we need the y coordinate that goes with that. So we'll bring back our negative 4x squared plus 4. And let's put in that square root of 1 third. So square root of 1 third squared gives us 1 third. So now I have negative 4 thirds plus 4. And that will give me 8 thirds. So my coordinates for point C would be square root of 1 third and 8 thirds. So I hope this helps with our optimization problems. Keep practicing. Really, um, a lot of the ones we've done here and in the previous video uh, were good examples of the types of problems you're going to see for optimization on the AP Calculus AB exam. Uh, but they do take practice to just really fine tune how to find that primary equation. I find that's where a lot of students have trouble is coming up with that primary equation. As always, if you like and subscribe, you'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. Let me know in the comments below if there's a topic you'd like to see explained in a different way or further. I'm glad to help. Bye for now.